My name is Paris Jambi from Darien Property Consult. I'm one of the directors of the company. Uh, it's, uh, we started the company around uh, 2016, but previously we had, uh, I had initially started a company. Later on, I got investors. When I was younger, I think I just wanted to be a doctor or something. Some, something to do with science, but I loved people. I grew up in a very big family. I grew up in my grandmother's house. We, we had cousins, uncles, and aunties. We were like 10 people in the house. So I was used to like having a lot of people around me and all that. So anyway, um, I grew up to high school. Um, I went to college, and then um, I just happened to know people. I'm a person of talking to people. I'm a very social person. So there's another time, a friend of mine, just a neighbor, I moved to somewhere in Lavington, and then a neighbor of mine just happened to be a realtor. I just used to, we, just, we were just friends anyway. So um, there's a friend of mine who told me that uh, there's a friend of his who is looking for a house, and he's an expert. So um, I was like, well, I wouldn't know anything about houses, and then it hit me, oh, there is a neighbor of mine who is a realtor, I can just connect the two which I did. After I connected the two, uh, my neighbor got the person a house, and then in the exchange, I didn't even know that people get paid or anything. He just gave me like a commission, like a token, thank you token, and told me, oh, seems you're a bit connected with these uh, diplomats and whatever. Any other time that you have someone, let me know. I was like, whoa, oh my God, I was in college, I had not made money before. That was like my first money without being like given. I was like, whoa, okay, well, it would be very interested. And then so I decided like to be his intern. So I was just his intern for like six months and all that and started to, uh, the friend of mine who knows the diplomat world and all that. I started bringing him closer and closer and uh, he would send me clients and all that. And that's how I started. First it was a job and then I realized, my God, I love what I do. I mean, it's giving services, providing housing and it's very interesting. I mean, like getting to witness like something like maybe a an empty piece of uh, land become a tower, towers and the uh, houses. And nowadays, especially in like Westland, Lavington, Kilimani and all that, the kind of apartments that are coming up, eh, these are world class. You know, when you do something and you become an intern of someone, you realize, do I want to do this or not? And I was, I realized I could do this long term. And you'd be very surprised. I've never done anything else apart from real estate. I met other people through real estate and all that, and I who are in real estate, and uh, I got a job in a big farm. Eh? I worked for like two years. Mm -hmm. After two years, I decided I could go solo, and I went solo. And in time, I met other people who wanted to partner with me because they realized I knew a lot of people. I know a lot of like developers. I know a lot of uh, maybe diplomats and clients and even locals. It's not just about diplomats, experts. You know. It's even locals who wants to invest mm -hmm. and uh, landlords and um, serious developers. Mm -hmm. So they wanted to partner with me and we did. And it's been a serious partnership for a while. Well, Darian, oh my God, it's been like a small, it's been like a baby for me. Now we can say from 2017, from 2017 i've been raising the company from from zero like we did like the company registering looking for an office looking for clients uh everything all the paperwork getting legal all the legal uh, stuff done from zero and i'm this person who like if i'm really interested in something i put a lot of effort a lot of extra Next, I read, I used to read about real estate, I used to watch everything about real estate. I used to have like a lot of mentors and I always say, if you want to be good in something, get someone who is doing that thing and let them be your mentor. I did a lot of real estate coaching, I did a lot, I did a lot of stuff. I go out of my way to do what I need to do to secure a house for, for the person. Mm -hmm. If you tell me that you want this a two bedroom house that is this and that, I'll go out of my way to look for that house. The thing is, I can say I had a lot of support. I had a lot of support from very different people, not just myself, not even, I can say it's not even financial support. It's um, emotional support, people helping me. Like I would go approach developers, I would ask, can I market your property? And they'd say yes, and they believed in me. And uh, I mean, I was very young. I was in my very early 20s, eh? but I had the confidence of going and approaching. Uh, I would go to a site, I'll see a site, I'd go there and ask them if I can market their product. 
they can market their houses and they would uh they would believe in me you see the thing is eh, i started from the high end because like my neighbor that's what my neighbor was doing so he trained me on what he was doing which is high end and then i got a job on the same road it was the same path eh? so that's how it started the people used to socialize with that's what they were doing so it just took on the path that you the path already taken i can see since i was very young i used to be just uh, this chitty chatty girl i was always so confident even uh, for me it was not the money i can tell you it's not the money it's just i wanted it and i was so confident about it and i was like i knew this is what i am meant to do so i was the, I, was, I was gonna do it the first three months were very disappointing and i had the i had the every reason to, to quit i had every reason to quit but i did not uh quit and i can tell you when i started the company i was like out for five months no three months without making any shilling but i still went on i was paying for office space for fuel for food and for people two people who used to work for me i grew up in a uh, in a village that i knew i had to get out of the village yes, yes. i knew i had no like backup plan like i had nowhere to go back to so it was either forward or never when I first started, there's this uh, client that I got. Uh, we started and I showed the person all the houses I knew in Westlands. And I used to live there, so I <laughs> I knew a lot of houses. All the houses, all the apartments. For, so for two months, I was out working, showing, making sure that they get the place. They were like, no, I don't like this. I like this, but I don't like this. I like this. And I was like, oh my God, what? I'll never forget that. One day, there's, um, I was just driving around looking for houses, like normal, like we do house hunting. And um, I came across this house, uh, this old, nice old colonial house and all that. And I was like, oh my God, this client of mine, we like this house. And I was like, okay, so I called the person and I was like, I have a house. This is the very last house that you have not seen. I don't think there's another house that you've not seen. And they came in and they were like, that is after like two, two, two three months. Eh? They were like, oh, wow, we like the house. But think about two months of showing the house almost every day. That's the good part. It's a better part. After I, uh, they took the house, which took maybe like um, a week or two. That was my first commission. I got paid my first commission by myself. That, that's now the company. So what happened? He really respected my work and respected my patience. And after that, their company took me in and gave uh, the housing department, which is a serious company, they took me in and I provide houses for them. It was a foundation because I can tell you since that was like five years ago, I still provide housing for them. Since then. If I was not patient, he probably would have, ah, this is one of the realtors, one of just any other realtor. But I was so patient. It was so frustrating of just going looking for houses every day for one person. But it paid off. For me, um, growing up, as I told you, I grew up in a village that I knew I had to come out. I didn't want to be this person sitting down and waiting for someone to provide and then they kick me out and whatever. I wanted to be an independent person. And I grew up, the one thing is, I can say how I was raised really uh, molded me. I grew up in a house full of women who were all independent, like my aunties and uncles were all independent. I was young, but they were older than me. So that really made me a very strong, independent woman. Yeah, and I, that's what I knew. You know, when you grow up knowing this is what a woman know, does, I can always tell young women, you can do it by yourself. It's much easier to be independent than to just sit there and uh, just being beaten and you don't have like a plan b be your own plan be your own plan if you get someone okay if you don't you're still okay i think independence is all about the mind eh? if even when you're young you independent you know you you have to do these independent to do even small things like you wake up make your bed wake up cook for yourself do, do small small things for yourself eh? it starts from there well, it's been a very, very um, interesting journey. My partner was a diplomat himself, so he's the one who introduced me to this person, who introduced me to this person. Yeah, it's been amazing. And I mean, I, for me, it's normal because, I mean, they are just people like you and me. Yeah? I mean, like, it's just a title. They're just people, in fact, very simple people, very um, humble people. So for me, it's just normal. 
maybe other people might see it differently but for me it's just normal mm -hmm. you see it with them normally just, just put it in your mind this is a human being just like you they feel pain like you they cry like you they have problems like you it's normal i remember this other time i was invited to um cocktail event and uh, i just went by myself first of all i was very uh, when i entered i was a bit nervous and then I just realized these are people like you, they would, they would introduce themselves and I would hear the title, I would think, oh my God, who, what? And then I realized they were so easy, I mean, so accommodating. Eh? We were just talking about the weather, uh, what is happening, it's not even politics, just the weather, where you're from, what do you do, just simple stuff. Yeah, normally before I met them, I would think, oh my God, what am I supposed to do? Kneel down or bend or, you know, I'll be shocked. But I realized they're so, actually, the most humble people I've met, to be honest, and straight. They keep time, number one, I like that. <laughs> they're very honest. You don't have to wonder whether they're, they're dodgy or what, you know, they're straight. They won't waste your time, you know, there's someone who can take you rounds for and rounds and, and they know they're not taking or they're not even looking. By the way, they just want to do a house tour or whatever. But they tell you straight up, even some people will like, you open the gate, they say, no, I don't like the house. And they go. I like that honesty. Than me uh, taking you around, showing you the house. And you know very well you don't like it. Just tell me from the word, I don't like it and I'm happy with that. I'll get you another house. And I'm very patient, maybe. You don't like it, I'll get you something else. It's a lot of hard work and commitment and uh, providing quality service. Because I can assure you, if I show you this house and you tell me, I don't like this, so I'll ask, what do you want? Do you want an op assuming it's an apartment, do you want an apartment with a closed uh, kitchen or an apartment with a, an open kitchen? Do you want an apartment on a high floor or a low floor? You tell me which location, mm -hmm. I will get you that. I always tell people, if I went back in time, I'll still do real estate. I mean, yeah, I love, uh, I still have um, this passion of being a doctor and whatever, or maybe like a medicine and all that, but it's a hobby. But for me, real estate, housing and all that, I don't have any other plan. I just want to do real estate. Even if I change from renting and all that, I'll start developing. Mm -hmm. But real estate is my passion. Mm -hmm. I can say that I'm a totally different person. I actually had dreams, eh? but I can say it's beyond my dreams. What I wanted to be a child, I, I mean, I knew I wanted to be someone, but I didn't expect to be here at my age right now. I didn't expect to be in this position. It's only one thing that I've not done. I wanted to go to Italy, but I'm going this year, so. <laughs> yeah, Corona came up. But I can say uh, everything that I really wanted, I think I have done most of the stuff. Not everything, I've done most of the stuff. I've made enemies. Everyone has. <laughs> I've made friends. I've made uh, associates. I've made um, companions, partners. I've made uh, a lot of... Um, I'm a very social person. Uh, if you have a dream about something, uh, what really makes people give up is money. Don't put money as the first uh, priority. Like I've always seen that any time that I'm passionate about something, like maybe I have a project. I'll tell you about some of the projects I've done. I've even like done projects. I remember when I was still uh, very young and we were, I was still starting up. Eh? I got a project by some embassy to look for houses, like 60 houses in one compound. Eh? For you to get that, you need money, you need uh, manpower, you need uh, transport, you need agents out there to go house hunting and all that. Eh? We didn't have the money, we didn't have, all we had is the passion and the ambition and the dream. And I'm telling you, we did that. It's not about the money, because if it's about the money, I would not have done it. If I thought of money before the, the, the dream, if you put money before the dream, you'll never make it. Put the dream first, money will follow.